I want to make, amen, give him a good hand. We appreciate him. He works hard. Can I say this right here? And I, I don't care who knows what I'm about to say, and I don't care if they find it out in the, in the general office. The heaven knows I'm about to say this. Amen. If something ever happens to me, amen, if something ever happens, I want you, the body of Christ, to stand up and say, and don't take no for an answer because they're going to try to do everything they can to put who they want, but this is the guy you need, all right? If I, if I fall off the face of the earth, amen, and, uh, I've told all them stories on how we, uh, he, I knew what the Lord was trying to do. He was trying to tell me, and I already knew, and we met in a park, and they run us out of the park because they're shutting down the park, amen, he just... And, and, but it worked out and God gave him, amen, the heart for you like he gave me, amen. And you know something, can I just tell you this right here? When I'm not here, I never leave this place and worry about what's going to happen because I know number one, he's going to do everything he can to get you in the presence of God. Number two, you won't have a need that he won't take care of in my absence, amen. And a lot of times in my presence, there's so many things going on. He's going one way and I'm going another and can I just tell you this right here, uh, this guy right here with the heart that he has, amen, to help you and to help me, amen. I, I want us today, we're about to take up an offer and Brother Matt's going to come talk about that. But today I want you to be a real blessing to my brother and to his wife. And they've sacrificed a lot to come here. He left a secular job and, and you know, and to come and be full time. And I'm so thankful that he did, amen. And most of all, I thank God for his heart, that he has a heart for people, amen. Can we give him a hand? Can we give the Lord a hand? Amen. Amen. These are some of the hardest times for a, a preacher because most of the time we can talk. Amen. And talk and talk. And sometimes it's hard to say. He's talking about our little uh, uh, get together when I first felt that I needed to help him. And he told me, he said, I knew it was you. And I told him, I said, I wish you'd have told me. It'd been a lot easier on me because <laughs> you pray and you pray and you think and you, you know, so, uh, but anyway, if he'd have told me earlier, I wouldn't have been as half as nervous and tore up, but I want to say this uh, on behalf of, on behalf of my family and, and she'll probably say something uh, a little bit, but I want y'all to understand, I count it a great honor and a great privilege to be your assistant pastor here. I would never take it for granted and, and I, I just can't thank you guys enough for allowing that to happen. And I can't but thank those who help me in doing what we do. Can we give all our workers, all our volunteers, and all our staff a good hand? Amen. Because without you guys, it really can't happen. And, and I thank God, first and foremost, I thank my wife for standing with me and being part of this. If you don't know and understand, until you become this role, your wife takes a lot of weight and a lot of burdens. Amen. And, and uh, so there's a lot that goes on in behind that she's praying and working. And she always tells me if I don't get right, she'll tell her daddy. And she's talking about her heavenly father on me. And I don't like that, but she does. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I thank our pastor uh, for allowing us to be here and, and uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about him in a way. I'm going to tell one story on him. Is that okay? Is that okay? Oh, he gets the mic after me. It's my day. Praise the Lord. Stacey Hill said it's my day. <laughs> but it's a good story. And I'll tell you one thing, one thing that really impressed me at this coming to Mount Vale is we were visiting some churches. We knew the Lord was moving us from where we were going. And he stood up and preached one time. I couldn't even tell you the title of the message. But he stood up and he preached and he told a story about a guy who was lost and trying to get in church. And he said something that stuck with me for a long time. He told that man, he said, you don't even have to come to my church. He said, I'll get up early, come pick you up, take you to the church you want, go to my church, and I'll come back and get you. And right there, that spoke to me the heart that our pastor had for people and for mankind. Amen. And, and with that, that sparked something in me that it's about the loss and it's about people. Amen. And again, I can't help but thank you guys enough for allowing us to be part of this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come back over here, but don't run out. Uh, they got you a shirt and they got you some other stuff, but I wanted to present the, the shirt. It says, I'm a grandpa and an associate pastor. Nothing scares me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, Sister Vicki. I want to say this. Uh, I admire this lady and her faith. I got great respect for her walk with God. And I'll tell you for a while, I've seen her faith tried and tried and tried uh, over and over and over through the valley of the shadow of death. And this lady keeps bouncing back, keeps coming back, loves the Lord, amen. I've seen people quit over the craziest things. If anybody had a reason to doubt and not understand what's going on in their life, this lady right here has, 
and she's held on, amen, and I think she is worthy of double honor today. Let's give her a good hand clap. Come on, ladies. Ladies got a little something and they're going to present to both you guys. You don't give a lady a mic, you know that, right? <laughs> I told him you don't give a lady a mic and expect me not to say nothing. But on behalf of the Mount Vale Church of God, we're going to give you guys a special gift this morning. And it comes with a lot of love and a lot of appreciation. And I, from being a former pastor's wife, and there's several others in here, I want to say we know what Sister Vicki deals with, the behind the scenes, the having to support the pastor when everything seems to be going down. And not only is she supporting him, but she's also supporting the lead pastor's wife. And she's there for everybody. And a lot of times we seem to forget the pastor's wives if they're quiet. But they're the prayer warriors. They're the ones that's on their knees when we're hurting. And we haven't even told them, but God's told them. And so that's why I just want you to know, Sister Vicki, from all of our hearts, we love you. And we appreciate both of you very, very much. Praise the Lord. All right. Do we have anything else? All right. Come over here, Miss Haney. Miss Haney's bringing the message today. Can we give her a good hand? <laughs> no, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Um, well, we just wanted to say thank you and that we appreciate everything that you have done for us from God's Amazing Girls um, because you have been a great mentor and everything, and you just... Um, just show a heart of God, and we appreciate that. So. All right. That, that, okay, all right. Let's give our associate pastor and his wife a big hand. Amen. Uh, like I said, the offering today, we're taking up an offering to be a blessing to them. Amen. Make sure you shake their hand and tell them how much. They don't, you know what, they're doing it for the Lord, and they do what they do for you, amen, and you can't, you can't pay people like that enough who's got their heart in it. Old preacher told me this one time, he said, let me tell you something, he said, he said, if they can't do it for free, he said, you don't pay them, he said, because when you hand them money, it ruins them every time, and you know what, I've seen that happen before, but I know these people are true, they're true, and they're, and they're real, and they're here for the love of God, they love God, and they love you, amen. At this time... But one of the most handsome young men in this whole church. He's so pretty, y'all give more. This is why we get him up here. He's so pretty, and he's married. So, so all y'all single ladies, forget about it. But uh, he, when he he pulls on heartstrings, and y'all give big time to this guy. That's why he takes up offerings, right? Y'all still love me, even though I take your money all the time, though, right? Okay, good, good. Hey, Sheriff, how many you got? Sheriff's got 46, and he needs a little help. Let's help the Sheriff out. Give the Sheriff a hand for what he does. We appreciate you, Sheriff. We love you. The ushers, come on up here. You know, back before Pastor Philip was a full-time pastor, or associate pastor, he had time to do anything. Me and him used to take his boat out and go fishing sometimes. But we ain't done it no more. He's too, y'all take up all of his time. So let me borrow him for a day or two. I don't have a boat. He's got a boat we go fishing. But anyways, we was out fishing a few years back. And uh, when I go fishing, I take five or six fishing rods and 12 tackle boxes. And it, at least make it look like I know what I'm doing. I intimidate the fish, you know. Well, uh, Pastor Phillip's a real simple kind of guy. He, he's got a spinning reel and a topwater plug. All of them's the same color, same line, one rod. And he'll, he'll pitch it up. And I was trying to teach him. say, hey, man, you need to try this bait caster out here. And you can pitch it up under them bushes and jerk that thing along. It's, it's, just, it's a lot easier. It's a lot better. And he'd never messed with one much before. And so I was trying to teach him how to, how to pitch that bait caster. And that was the coolest thing in the world to me, to try and teach him something. You know, uh, an older friend of mine that took me fishing, that's taught me so much in my life about ministry. That's taught me so much just about being there for people. He's always been there for me and my family. And it was so cool to try and teach him something. I'll say it was the biggest bird's nest you've ever seen when he tried to pitch that thing. It was just amazing. I had to cut all the line off that reel and put new line on it. But I tried anyway, and I'm sure that I've made some bird nests out of some situations that he's tried to teach me before too. But I'm so grateful for him and his wife and their family and all that they've done for us. As I, I've seen this man and his wife stand up 
in, in a literal hell they're walking through and stand up and minister to you guys and be there for our family when, when his family needed him more than ever. I, he's never quit. There ain't a quit in that family. They're tough as nails, and we're so grateful to have them. Let's give them another hand. I, we can't give them enough applause. And we're so fortunate at this church to have an asset of a for real full-time associate pastor that dedicates his life to helping our full-time you know, senior pastor. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put what? Ten thousand. And so with them two working side by side, well, there's not a better duo in this world. And Jesus took 12 men and turned the world upside down. And I think them two men right there are turning Jefferson County upside down and everywhere else they go. And I'm so grateful to, to be a part of this and have them here. It's just a wonderful blessing. Thank you for what you do, brother. You're, you're the man. So with that being said, I need you all to stand on your feet so you can get to your wallet real easy. And ladies, you can bend over, get your checkbook out of your pocketbook and dig real, 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 real deep. And sh show this man and woman of God how much you love them. You know, for, for some of us, you don't think about your finances a whole lot. You, you, you Maybe you got a good job, but maybe you're uppity up, maybe you got a little bit of money going on. But I'll tell you, in ministry, it, it literally cost you everything to be in full-time ministry. It, he probably made a whole lot more money pumping fuel than he is right now working for you and him. So what a better opportunity do you have than to make a little bit of a sacrifice and give back to this man and help him and his family because they've sure made the sacrifices for us. And let's give them another hand one more time. Tell them how grateful we are for all the work that they've done for us. So dig real deep and, and be a blessing if you can to them. If, it, if it's just $5 you can give, just something to show your appreciation to them and it'll go along while you're sowing into good ground and the Lord will bless you for it. Let's all pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your mercy and your grace, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for Pastor Philip and Sister Vicki. Lord, thank you for placing them here to help us further the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for their family, for their children, for their grandchildren. Lord, thank you for the sacrifices that they've made for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren. Lord, thank you for their dedication. Lord, I pray that you'll bless them with a special kind of anointing. God, make their ministry more effective than it's ever been before. Lord, bless them, God, in every area of their life. Bless their health, Lord. Bless their finances, Lord. Bless their home. Bless their children, Lord. God, be with them everywhere that they go. Lord, let this offering go. God, multiply it more than tenfold, God, because we know that it will increase your kingdom because we know where it's going, Lord. We love you. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. And the church said... Welcome to Mount Bell Church, a healing church for a hurting world. I am Lisa. We are so honored that you have joined us in this service. If you are a first-time guest or visitor, we are so glad that you are here, that we have an exclusive welcome gift just for you at the Connections Desk. If you have any questions about our church, find a First Impression team member by looking for those wearing the green lanyards around their necks. Now, check out these upcoming happenings. On this Thursday, April the 14th at 6.30 p.m., the Handcrafted by God's Women's Ministry will be having their monthly meeting. This is always a great time with fellowship, a devotion, and food. So ladies, bring a finger food and a friend and come on out. Easter weekend is approaching fast. As a reminder, this Saturday, April the 16th, is our annual community Easter celebration from 2 to 4 p.m. on the church grounds. Everything is completely free. This will be rain or shine. If you have Facebook, we ask you to please share the event this week to get the word out. Then for Easter Sunday, there will be a sunrise service at 6.30 a.m. in the main sanctuary. Then breakfast to follow in the fellowship hall. Then just like usual, small group classes at 9.30 and Sunday worship at 10.30 with no evening service. Make plans to attend one or all of these services. A New Day Cancer Support Group is hosting their 16th annual Pamper Night on Thursday, April the 21st at 6.30 p.m. All cancer patients, survivors, and caregivers are welcome. If you would like to help, donate, or bring food, please get with Karen Arms or Shelly tonight. This will be a night full of pampering, door prizes, finger foods, and lots of fun. Our men, did you remember to go and register for the King's Table Conference held at the end of this month in Cleveland, Tennessee? See Roger Thorberg for all the details. 
On Saturday, April the 30th, the Senior Joy Adult Ministry is having another bingo night. It will be in the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. All are welcome. This year, Mother's Day is on Sunday, May the 8th. Is there a woman in your life that is special to you that you would like to honor or do a memorial for? This can be your mother, grandmothers, spiritual mother, daughter, sisters, or friends. There will be a special insert in the bulletin, as well as a video observing the special women and memorials. To make a tribute to one or more of these special women, pick up a Mother's Day donation envelope at the Connections desk. For each woman that has been a blessing to you, write your donation amount, person you are recognizing, and your name. If you would like to include a picture in the video, it must be submitted to Deborah Eastep by Wednesday, May the 5th, to be included in the tribute. You can also make your donations on the Church Center app. Here at Mount Bell Church, our goal is for souls. We believe each one can reach one. We are saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. Join us now as we continue with praise and worship. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Oh, then you came along and you put me back together. Now every desire, oh, is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Oh, nothing is better than you. Hallelujah. And I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, oh my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is still God of the valley, and there's not a place in your mercy and grace. Won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. 
You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can And you turn graves into gardens And you turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Lord, there's nothing Oh, nothing is better than you And you turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can And you turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Lord, there's nothing better than you There's nothing Better than you, oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you, there's nothing Better than you, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, there is nothing, nothing that is better than you. Oh, Lord, you are worthy, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, you're worthy. Oh, let's just lift our hands and tell him. Let's just tell him how worthy he is. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy is
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, and blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King, the yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. Struck a wonder at the mention of your name. And Jesus, your name is power, breath, and living water. Such a marvelous mystery. of your name Jesus Jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery
praise the Lord. Somebody bless him in the house today. Come on. He's been better than that to me. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Reach down, pick up your Bible. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. As these continue to pray, let them pray as long as they need to. Amen. Let's jump to the Word. Amen. I want to, uh, tonight, uh, right, uh, right, effective immediately uh, after service tonight, I need to see the leadership team, everybody that's in leadership, just five minutes, talk to you about the little Easter celebration, and we're going to be doing some different booths and things like that. And even if you're not a part of, amen, and you want to be a part of this thing, setting up a booth and, and ministering and handing out things and helping people, amen, and just loving on people as they come through here, be right after service tonight for about five minutes, amen. I want to give you just a little shot arm, kind of give you an idea of what we need to happen or expecting to happen. Luke chapter 19, if you have your Bible. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hand this way and let's pray for Sister Jessica. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every infirmity in the flesh that's in that girl's body right now. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, right now, let the healing virtue of Jesus Christ come. God, you said in your word, you're the God that heals us. And God, we believe your word today that the healing virtue of Christ would come into that young lady's body and bring healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you believe the Lord did it, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Amen. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. 29th verse. You ready? It said, It came to pass when he was come nigh unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, at the Mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples said, go ye into the village over against you in which you are entering, and you shall find a coat tied whereon yet never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say un unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And, th and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners thereof said unto them, why loose ye the coat? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as they went, they spread their clothes in the way. And, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto them, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name today. We're so thankful for the moving of your spirit that we already feel prevalent in the house of God. For every person that's here today, God, I just thank you for, Lord. I praise your name, Lord, that they came to Mount Vale asking your choice blessings. God, you know the needs that's represented. God, some are lost, some are backslid, some are, Lord, today are in need of a physical healing. Some are needing, God, their hearts healed. And I'm praying, God, that you'd send the grace of God and the Spirit of God to cover the needs that's in the house. Meet us in these altars, God, and God be glorified in everything that's said and done in this service today. And we give you praise. And everybody say it. Shake somebody's hand before you sit down. Say, you know, we do have church around here on Sunday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. We call this, uh, we call this Holy Week. Amen. And uh, the reason that uh, we do is because this is uh, the week uh, of the death of Christ. And we see that he set his face like a flint, the Bible said, and he had made up his mind. Amen. He submitted his will to the will of the Father in the garden and he had uh, uh, now he's headed in and he knows at, that, that he's nearing his demise as he's coming in and I, I wanted to just talk about this just for a second and then I'll try to get right on into the rest of the message 
But Jesus sends his disciples, amen, to, to, to go get a colt, amen, uh, that, uh, to ride upon. And this is what he said. And one of the gospels said that he's tied up in a place where two ways met. You know, and a lot of times, uh, a lot of times the people that usually, amen, that I run into, they're standing at a crossroads of life and they're looking and they don't know which way to go and they're looking for some direction from God to be able to figure out which way they need to go, amen. And, and, I, and as I begin to think about this little colt, amen, it being tied up as he was, amen, you know something, can I just tell you this? He, he was there, he belonged to somebody else. Nobody even asked the question to Jesus, said, Jesus, uh, uh, how do you know there's a colt? No, they didn't even ask, they just said, okay. And, and they all went and they went to go get the colt. But when they get there, amen, they find this colt and he's tied up. Now he belongs to the Lord and you know it and I do too because we see the rest of the story. He ends up riding the colt on the end. But do you know, amen, this is the thing that really struck me about this little coat, he belonged to the Lord, but he was tied up. I know a lot of people this morning, amen, that are tied up, but they belong to God, but they're tied up, amen. They're at a place where two roads meet, amen, and there's a destiny for them, and they don't know how to get to the destiny, if you will. They don't know which way to go, amen. God sent me today to untie you a little bit. I'll, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. But the thing that intrigued me about this, amen, is he, that, that he was still, he, he was tied up. Can, can I just say this? We ought to, sometimes, in our lives, have you ever had, I know fellas do, young men, especially young men, look at me young men, I'm telling you, you'll have, I promise you this, you'll have some ideas, amen, in your mind that'll go through your head, you'll think it's the greatest thing it ever was. And one day, after a while, when you grow up, you'll realize that's about as dumb a thing as I ever thought about doing in my life. Thank you, Brother Charlie, for the one. Amen. I'll take it right now. Amen. Uh, but, but, but can I say that in, 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 in this walk with Christ, amen, the coat belonged to him. Amen. It belonged to somebody else. But he sent was his. Amen. And, and, and there's people that are here this morning they, they, that God is sending me to you today. And you're, you're tied up. Amen. I, I thank God that he tied me. I got in some mess. How many? No, don't raise your hand. I got in some mess. Let's preach on to the pastor this morning. Be all right. Uh, I got in some mess coming up through life. And there was a lot of things that I had intention to do, but I was tied up. I, I know you never was there, but I was tied up. And, and I thank God today, amen, as I was reading the scripture, I began to think about the fact of the matter being there was a whole lot more stuff that I would have probably been involved in and probably already been dead, but he had me tied up. I was tied up. And, and, and you know, and can I just tell you this? Some people, ought, some of you sitting right here right now, you ought to thank God, amen, that you didn't marry the one you, why, you know why it didn't work? Because the Lord had you tied up. You was tied up in a place where two ways met, met, and you thought you had right direction and God, and you had a little bit of wiggle room, you could move around a little bit, but you were still tied up and the hand of God kept you from making a bigger mess than you already made in your life, amen? And this is the thing that really messed me up about that, amen? Because I know a lot of people that are in ministry today and they're tied up, amen? They don't understand, amen? They don't know why that things have not evolved and moved and the church has not grown and people are not being saved. And for a moment in time, sometimes God has them tied up. But this is the thing that really got me about the scripture as I was thinking about it. Even though, amen, that little donkey was tied up Amen. Even though he was he, he, he was a he was a donkey. We preached about it for years and years. He was if a king came riding in on a stallion, it meant war and, and Jesus being the Prince of Peace, we may talk about a little bit of it. But the thing about it was this right, he was a less desirable animal that was tied. I was I don't know about you, but I was less desirable. Amen. I, I still to this day get up every morning of my life and I think, God, what was you thinking? I don't understand how I got to this place in my I never got up one morning and said, Hey, I think I'm gonna be a preacher. As a matter of fact, every morning of my life I got up, it was the farthest thing from my mind. But God had me tied up. I couldn't get loose. And the thing that got me about it was, is he said, if any man asks you, if the owner, can, can I tell you this? I thought about this in my mind this morning. The owner, amen, the things that have us sometimes that are tying us up in the world to keep us from going even farther away from God, amen, the owners, amen, so if any man asks you, what, what are you doing untying the animal? He said, tell them that the Lord 
hath need of him. Can I tell somebody this morning, I know you're tied up, I know you're messed up, jacked up, and, 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 and seem like the world has fallen in on you, but the Lord hath need of you. I found out that God loved people that was tied up. Anybody can identify with that this morning? I got one person. Brother Charlie, I'm gonna set you on stage if you keep saying amen so good, amen. And then the thing that got me about it was, is this, see, religion says God don't want anything to do with you, you vile sinner you, but, but, but sometimes he goes and gets those that are tied up into drugs and he pulls them out, amen, and he makes preachers out of them. Sometimes he goes and gets those that are tied up in sexual promiscuity, amen, and he pulls them out and he makes Sunday school teachers up sometimes and we don't never need to limit the hand of God. And if you look at somebody through your eyes of disdain and say, well, they're tied up and God don't have no need of them, you have absolutely missed the whole mission of Christ. Jesus Christ came to set captives free, amen. Paul said, of whom I I am the chief and it's time that you and I stop looking at people as little donkeys if you will I'm trying to be nice and not go plumb King James on you as little donkeys if you will all tied up and God don't need Jesus sent his disciples to get a little donkey that was tied up and he said I need him look at your neighbor and say neighbor he needs you this morning Jesus is about to make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's gonna be his last ride, if you will, until he gets to the cross. He knows what's about to happen, amen. In verse 35, and they brought, and they brought him to We ain't just in our, please don't just me. If you ain't do. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coal and they sat Jesus there on, amen. Isaiah 9, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, amen. Can I tell you this, amen, that the, the, the reasoning behind it being a donkey or a mule, if you was, if you will, amen, instead of, instead of it being a, a, a stallion, I, I just told you the reason. And see, the, here's the thing about, here's the thing about walking with Christ. I know so many people who say they're Christians and they don't have any peace, amen. It was prophesied he would be the Prince of Peace. John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace, amen. And, and you know something, he's, he's intending on you and I to walk in peace this morning. And, and, and Isaiah 53 and 5 said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace. It's all right. You, you, it's all right. Just help me a little bit. Think about it. The chastisement of our peace. So I want you to know something. If you're a Christian today and you're walking in this life and you see the turmoil that's all over the world, especially in our country, in our community, in our schools, amen, if you see all that, and listen, if you're moved out of your place, amen, then you can't pray. And that's why he said, I'm leaving you my peace. It's time that the church gets some peace. I want you to know today, it don't matter what they do in the White House to the outhouse, amen, won't be long till Jesus comes and takes his church out. You ought to have a little peace in your life is headed now to a he's headed now amen uh, and he's headed to a cross to win a great victory and he's on his way and it says he's on his way Zechariah 9 and 9 prophesied said rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shallow daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly riding upon an ass and upon the colt and the foal of an ass the presence of Jesus demanded worship at that time Can I, I, this is what I don't understand about the modern church some people say well if they sing old songs some people say well I like the new songs and, and we, get, we get all distraught about whether it's old or whether it's new or whether it's slow or whether it's fast or whatever we get all distraught amen but can I tell you this right here that's absolutely flesh it's completely 100% flesh amen when we stand and say I want this or I want that this is not McDonald's honey or Burger King amen we don't have it our way he has it his way somebody say amen and when they're singing about him I don't care amen if they, if they rapping I don't care people say well I don't believe in it I don't listen to it either but you know what I don't care, amen, it, it, whatever 
it takes to reach the next generation, that's what I'm looking for. And we get so bent out of shape on how we don't like this or we like that. And you know something? I don't know about you. I love Jesus. And if they're going to sing about him, I'm going to worship him. If they're going to, if they're going to hit two notes on the piano and begin to sing, even if it's off key, amen, I still want to be a part of what's going on, amen, because he's still worthy today. It's time that the church stop giving Jesus circumstantial praise. If everything's going okay, all right, yes and amen. But I want you to know he don't even accept that. It's the praise that we give him from deep down inside of us. When everything's went wrong, we know that he's still God and he's still on our side. I gotta back up, I gotta back up just a minute. I was reminded of a little story. Uh, well, my, my, my dad will be in heaven June the 3rd. He'll be there 20 years this year. It's unbelievable, isn't it? 20, 20, 20 years. My dad's been in heaven June the 3rd. Been gone 20 years. My, and watch this. This is so crazy, but uh, June the 3rd, my grandmother will be in heaven 18 years. And June the 3rd, her sister Opal will be in heaven 17 years. Every one of them died on June the 3rd. So if I go missing on June the 3rd, don't come. I'm in heaven with Jesus, right? All my family died on June the 3rd. Amen. But I, but I want you to understand with me, amen, that the, the, there's no circumstantial praise that's in heaven. There's, I know they see and they're seeing it all for what it is right there. But you and I, by faith, need to come in and realize that this, this situation that we're living in in the world cannot continue down the path it's on. So Something major is on the horizon. And you know, I hope it's a, uh, the rapture of the church for us, but for the people that are lost, I'm worried about. But I don't know. But I got a piece down on the inside of me that says it don't matter if, if they reincarnate uh, Adolf Hitler and put him in. Amen. It don't matter who the president is. It don't matter about Russia. It don't matter about Ukraine. It don't matter about whatever other disease they're going to try to bring up after the midterms. You remember, you heard it here first. Amen. It don't matter what they unleash on this earth because we serve the God that can take care of all of it. We serve a God that's about to show up on the scene. We can't walk around with our hands down singing, oh, I don't know what God's gonna do. I don't know either, but I'm not gonna look at it through pessimistic eyes and say, I just wonder what's gonna happen. And like the devil's got more power than God. I come to declare to somebody in this house with no help in the house, might I might add, except for the Lord. Amen. I come to declare this morning that whatever it is that happens, God is still worthy of all praise, all honor, and all glory. I know we'll forget I'm sitting in my dad's living room and he's gasping for air. And it, and it, and it was, I just, I don't know what happened. I got up. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make it. I didn't say, I'm going to get up, go get in my truck. I just got up. I'm going down 160 in my truck at two o'clock in the morning at 30 miles an hour, amen? I didn't, and I got to my house. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I went in and tears was running off my face. I opened the door, shut the door, laid down in the middle of the floor of the living room of the house that I was living in at the time. And I wept before God. And I said, God, I thank you for every year that God, that you gave me with my dad. I thank you for everything you ever did to provide for me, to help me to get to this point in my life. And God, God, I want you to know I'm not mad, but I worship you. I said, God, it hurts like everything, but I'm still gonna praise you. God, I know that you have a plan. I know this is a dressing room for eternity and my dad's fixing to step across on the other side and I want you to know that I'm so thankful that I have you in my life. I want you to know that I'm thankful for what the word of God said. Y'all gonna make me preach myself out of this. Oh, I know what you're gonna do. I'm so thankful, God, today that you, of the resurrection and the life. If my daddy goes by the way of the grave, that one day after a while, there'll be a trumpet sound and you will resurrect him out of the grave. Somebody ought to give him a little praise. Amen, 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 amen. Verse 36 said, and as they went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when they were come nigh, even now under the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God. With a loud voice for the mighty works they had seen that they had seen. You know, can I, 
I want to slow down just a minute. But have you ever thought about this? We can have a thousand things going right, one thing going wrong. And it don't even have to be something major. One thing clouds all the beauty of what God's doing in our lives. One thing. One thing. Jesus told the rich young ruler, he said, one thing thou lackest. One thing stands between you and eternity. That's what he said. And you know something? Between us and peace, sometimes there's just one thing that's happening. And we can't see the good, how God's blessed, how God's moved, how God's... All we see is we got this problem that we don't like. We got this problem that's happened, and we don't know why, and we don't understand what, what's God thinking. I don't, can I just tell you God might be just pulling you up a little higher? Can I say this this morning, instead of being mad at God over every little thing that happens, a lot of people say, well, I ain't gonna serve God. Well, I said, don't serve him. And you say, oh, please, don't say that. I say, don't serve him, and let him know. Let me know. It ain't that I don't care. I do care, but you can't teach crazy people stuff, but they won't listen. If they're serving God for what they can get, they don't love him no way. I want you to understand this is a love affair between God and man. I want you to know today that heaven kissed earth. I got caught in the smack and didn't even mean to, and I fell in love, amen, with a man called Jesus. I went and heard this old black preacher preach one time. He was wonderful. I loved that man. He stood up and he said, I want to declare to you today that my wife is in love with another man man and everybody went oh he said and his name is Jesus and he's wonderful and he's a mighty God and he's a counselor and he's a prince of peace so if you don't serve him you better serve him because you love him not because of what you can get out of him because it ain't always going to be what you can get honey you don't always get your work man. they were because their mics was working good they were rejoicing because they saw the miracles of God. The blinded eyes opened, the deaf ears opened. They saw the dead raised. They saw the multitudes fed. They saw the lepers cleansed. They were rejoicing because they thought he was coming to take over the country. Look at me, look at me. We're from the South, right? Uh, we are, we are. We gun-toting, uh, uh, Bible-packing uh, people around here, you know? And we love the Lord, amen? And we like our Second Amendment. We love our country and all that. But don't you understand? Trump ain't the Savior, sweetheart. I, I, ain't look, I ain't looking for Trump. I'm listening for the Trump of God to sound. Help me now. Help me. I ain't against him, amen? But I want you to understand, my faith and hope ain't in him. And they thought he was coming to take over the country. Amen? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And you know something? I worried about it a little bit, but I got to, well, I don't care what they do anymore. You know something? The longer you sit and watch that is less time you got to pray and talk to God and read the word and get closer to him. Help me, somebody. And can I tell you this? It's all lies anyway. Amen? They call, they call it programming for a reason. They program us to think crazy stuff. Amen? Listen, I'm against anything and anybody being hurt in Ukraine, but it has has nothing to do with what they said in the White House or what they said on CNN. It has everything to do with the corruption that's in that place and the Nazis that came in right there, human trafficking and bio labs. That's what it's got to do with. But we said, and we said, oh Lord, this is so bad. And it is bad. It's a terrible thing. I'm not, I'm not even suggesting to you that I think Putin's a good guy. He's a horrible, murderous man. But there's other alternatives that we don't know about and God knows. And what we do is sit there and say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You ain't going to do nothing. Amen. Except lose out with God. I refuse to give all the time that I have to worship, to praise, to pray and to study to a nonsense mess that's telling lies anyway. It's all lies. But I'll tell you this. Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He's the truth today. Put your faith in him. They knew, they just knew. I thought I was gonna get by with trying to just ease through this message. Y'all ain't gonna let me, but that's all right. We're gonna do it anyway, amen. And well, well, watch, watch with me, watch with me. They were excited because they thought Jesus come to kick Joe Biden out. Pun intended, amen. <laughs> or, or kick Trump out, I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't care about it. Listen, I want you to understand this right here. You have to understand that neither side is for you or me. How much better does life get under either any of them? And you, you got to know with me, amen. We're sitting here and we're so involved in the things tainted by the stuff of the world that's going on, amen. And you ought to be wise and you ought to know what's going on. 
and you ought to be in a place that you understand that God's got to be in control of this or this whole thing's going to explode on us and we won't have a country but I'll tell you this this country was founded on God I don't know what's about to happen but I'll tell you this amen I'm not rejoicing because I think Jesus is going to come and take the White House I'm not rejoicing because I think he's going to come take the Senate and, and, and the Congress I, I'm not re I'm rejoicing today because there's a book somewhere I never did see amen but in that book is my name and in that book is all the believers through the ages and yours too that have believed and I'm not rejoicing today amen that the devil is subject unto us I'm rejoicing today that my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life I'm rejoicing because of eternal life that lives on the inside of me Woo. verse 9 verse 9 Matthew 21 9 and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Every time you and I come, we ought to be crying. Hosanna. Hosanna means save now. Amen. We learned that a few years back. Just, a, uh, just a, not too long ago, he made the statement, or just, just a few days earlier, he made the statement. Uh, for the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost, Luke 19.10. Save, the crowd shouted. I wonder, if, I wonder if Jesus thought that's exactly what I'm here for. You know what he really came for? To redeem you and me back to him. He came because you was on your way to hell. And, I was on, and, he, and listen, I, I just want to hit this and leave it alone, okay? I'm so sick of the division that's propagated by all I ever, I ever told it, there's only one race, it's a human race. There's just one race, amen? And he didn't come, amen, to say, he ain't a white man's God, a black man's God, a Hispanic or an Asian, amen? He came that the whole world might be saved. He come for a whosoever, and a whosoever don't know his skin color, amen? We all bleed red, and we all come from God, amen? We're all created in the image of God, and the enemy loves. He knows a house divided cannot stand, so he tries to bring division into the house. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they was talking about, they said, man, they're talking about how bad it is. I said, I don't see it nowhere. I said, I don't know one person. I said, I don't know one person that I know that don't like anybody for their skin color. I said, everybody I'm around, I said, maybe you ought to hang out with the people I hang out with. I said, because everybody that I'm around knows there's one race and it's a human race and God sent his son to die for everybody, amen? And can I just tell you this today, amen? Here's, here's what he come to do. He come to seek and to save that which was lost. I, I, can I, I, I know I told you this, I'll say it one more time. I was reading over in Revelation chapter seven one time and I looked at what I seen around the throne to disturbed me so bad because I looked and he said there's all kindred tongues and nations all kindred tongues everybody was represented around the throne what was they all doing they all had this one thing in common they were all worshiping and praising the king and can I tell you this today I began to weep as I read it and I said God I said thank you for showing me this I said I don't want a church that looks anything less than what heaven's going to be about I said God send me everybody I'll take them all. I don't care who they are. They got a soul. Jesus Christ came and bled and died for the whole world. Amen. And they're crying, save now. That's why I'm crying today. Lord, save now. I got to get on with this message. Y'all have uh, worked me to death this morning. John 3 and 17 said, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the, through him the world might be saved. The heartbeat of God is that the world be saved. It's time for us, the church, to come back to the Great Commission that we go into all the world, Mark 16, and preach the gospel to every creature. 39, 40, Luke 19, 39, 40. Watch, watch, watch. See, I'm going to be mean for just a second, but I can't help myself. You know how to tell who the religious folk are, right? The Pharisee said, get on the board. Put my, my next scripture, buddy. Put it up there for me. What, what, what? what? Pharisees. The, the holy people. The holy people. I got to tell you this. I had a new family come here a long time ago. And 
they come a long time because I intervened some crazy folk. You ever met any crazy people? I know you don't know anybody. Come see me. I knew she's a few. I know some, you know. And uh, well, a young couple, young couple, beautiful people come in and just looking for God. And I was just trying to be their friend. And uh, and uh, the girl, she had a little teardrop cut in her shirt right here. Oh, Scott, you couldn't see nothing. You couldn't see nothing. And one of the one of the sisters. And this, I figured it out later on because the girl come in was pretty and she was, she was jealous. She was afraid she was going to get her man. But if her man loved the Lord, she wouldn't have nothing to worry about. That's a good sermon. You didn't say, you missed, you missed a good chance to say amen right there. And, uh, and she ran up to me and she said, did you see that church she had on? I said, I, I seen it, I guess. What is it? So she described it. So I had to look. I didn't see. Um, it's just a little place right there. It wasn't nothing showing just right there. She said, the old holy women are mad. You know what I said? I said, you tell the old holy women. I said, shut up. Leave them alone. <laughs> I said, tell them pastor. said, shut up and leave them alone. I said, I dare you. I don't even speak to them. I said, you leave them alone. I said, I'm trying to help them youngins. I said, I don't care about the shirt. I said, I don't care about the hairstyle. I don't care what kind of shoes they got on. I said, I don't care about the soul. And I said, you better hush about it. Now watch it. Pharisees getting upset because people are giving praise to Jesus. If you want to know who religious folk are, they're the one to get mad. And say, well, it's got to be this way. It's got to be that way. It needs to be the way the Lord wants it to be. We have our tendencies. We like it this way. We like it that way. Yes and amen. You know what I do? I was riding down the road the other night, me and Brother Joe, and, and I was just saying, and I told, I told Jerry, I said, if you tape this, I'll kill you. I said, I'll preach funerals all the time. I just sang, there's a happy land of promise over in the graveyard. You know, if you like them songs, sing them. I like them too. I mean, we'll sing them sometimes. But, 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 the, but, but the Pharisees is upset because there's worship going up and it's not about them anymore. It's about him. What is worship should be aimed at him anyway, right? And they come, they come to Jesus and this is what they say. They say, rebuke your disciples. We don't like it. We've never had it this way around here. We don't like this. Uh, we've not had a meeting about it. We've checked with the committee and nobody's got a permit to even have a meeting about this kind of service that we're having. You remember, you remember, you remember. Uh, uh, we'll tell them the church of God. So they uh, formed a committee to find out uh, and vote in who was going to change the light bulbs in the church and said after much deliberation, they decided they wouldn't have no change. And uh, that's the way church goes. You got to vote it in, amen, and, and it becomes more political and the Pharisees is all tore up because they don't like something. Can I, tell you, I take a little wildfire over no fire, amen. I always said there's enough wet blankets around to put out a wildfire. And they said, this is wildfire rebuke your disciples. Uh, we, we don't like what we see here. You know, so they wouldn't give no praise to God, amen. And they got mad. And then a lot of times the people who are getting mad on styles of worship are not worshiping either. That don't make no sense to me. Worship with them, amen. We'll get a song you like after a while it's not about the song I like it's about it's about the object of our affection which ought to be Christ and they didn't like their attention and affection going towards somebody they saw him as a threat to 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 their place in religiosity amen they saw him as that amen and this is what he said they said rebuke our disciples and he said I tell you that if he should hold their peace the stones would immediately cry out and and I know I've taught you this but it, it it's it's worth repeating today Amen. It was very customary at that time. He was not talking about the stones on the ground. I heard the old song, I don't want to let a rock cry out for me. And I get it. Yes and amen. But that's not what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about rocks, honey. If you've ever been over there, he's, there's, there's more rocks than there are human beings on the whole planet in that one little place in the world. That's not what he's talking about. But what he was talking about was the, the, the piles of rock that were built up, that were monuments to where the power of God had moved, amen. He was saying that every place where God has already moved, that you got a pile of rocks that said God healed it blind, God healed blinded eyes there, and God God delivered somebody from leprosy over there, and God made the lame to walk over there. He said every. Where you, he said, everywhere you've erected a memorial to the power of God, if I tell them to be quiet, he said, they will begin to cry 
out. I want you to know with me and understand today, amen, there's a lot of monuments, amen, to the power of God. We don't like they did in, in, in Old Testament days. We don't do like Joshua did and pile up 12 big stones in the middle of a river, amen. We don't do, amen, like, like Samuel did, amen, when he took a suckling uh, calf and killed it and hitherto on a rock pour oil on it said hitherto hath the Lord helped us we don't do like that like Moses and, and, and Aaron and her did when they set up a stone and they raised his hands and while his hands was while his hands was in the air the children of God won the battle they we don't do that anymore we don't do that anymore we used to we but what we want to do is we want to live in the past and we want to say this is how they did it then and we don't do it like that no more and God can't be used that way and I want you to know this was a new thing that fell right up in the middle of the religiosity religiosity of the day and it said this is how it's going to be from now on we're not piling up rocks anymore but it's going to be through the mouths of babes and sucklings and the people of God that will give him praise and testify Jesus said these stones are a silent visual prop of the mighty acts of God Jesus said, for generations, these stones have been a, a visual reminder to you what a great God we serve. These markers give evidence that God is in the land. These piles of rocks were saying that he's been at work and he's alive and well. These piles of rocks symbolize that God intervened in the lives of his people and God still, because of pile of rocks, they knew that God was still answering prayers, 1 Peter 2 and 5. He also, man, you feel that? My God. He, he also has... lively stone. Peter said, we're not piling up rocks to commemorate that God's in the land. He said, you're alive, you're living T testimony that, that God's in the land. Come here, sis. You. Turn around for would you? Come here, Tyler. Come here. Girls, get her. Stand right there. I'm not being ugly. I'm not being. Stand right up there. Matt, how come up here, son? Matt, come on. Hurry. Run, run, run. Susie, go first. Stand with people up there. Both y'all come with me. Get up here. Joe Jones. You're the next contestant on the process right. Get up here. Now. I'm going to pay for that. Ain't I? Now wait a minute. Now let's look at the scripture. Now we can look at it better. We can see it better. See the scripture? Look at the scripture. Stand up here. Say, you are lively stones. Built, built upon a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up sacrifices acceptable unto God. Charlie Mills, get up there. What are you doing? At least me in a pair. Sit there. Look at Matt, you. Now, see, I, I ain't going to tell everybody's story, but. You can't snow the snowman. You can't kid the kid. I preached that right over a long time. He come in, he stoned out his mind. If you high, I know it. I won't tell it on you, but I know it. How you know, preacher? Because I used to get high too. He come in because he promised his mama he'd come to church. He'd get up and go throw up while we was taking up the offering in the early service. 
now. No, he ain't getting high no more. He's lively. He's lively. He's a living testimony that the power of God is in the land. See, see this young man right here? Amen. <laughs> see this guy right here? He don't like it, but I went, I got a call to preach a funeral one night right behind my sister's death. Walked in there, never seen that kid in my life. Walked in there and I was him and his sister. They know nothing about the Lord. Amen. If they did, it wasn't very little. And I looked down there and that woman looked just like my sister. His mama did. And I cried. They thought, I bet everybody thought, man, how he loved that woman. I never met that woman before. I just lost my sister and I preached that message that night. And these babies started coming. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. He is a living testament in the earth today that God will save you even if you don't have no religious background. This one here. What, what's this one here, man? I like this guy right here. He, hold my hand, walk with me, would you? Think about this little guy right here. He, I know him ever since he, 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 he about that big when he started coming here. And I tell you what, you talking about, listen, don't be mean. No babies in here for being mean. This is the meanest kid ever walked in here. Him, Matt, how about? Or Matt Shelton. Matt and Matt. If you, Matt, if you name your child Matt. <laughs> you know something? He's a, he's a, he, he is evidence in the earth that even though you was raised up in church, and you got away from God that God will never give up on you. This is the prodigal that came home and he's a testament today in the earth that God. Hey, sis, can I say, watch this. Sister Vicky, where's Sister Vicky at? Come up here, Sister Vicky. Get up here and help me preach. What's the matter with you? And this lady right here, see this lady right here? Can I tell you this right here? She, she's, a, she's a lively stone. She's alive and she's here and she's still, her faith is alive today. Can I tell you? I had no idea that Brother Carlos was going to leave this world when he left this world. But can I tell you, there's life after your spouse goes on to be. Look, look, serving God, still answering the call. This lady right here, what, this woman right here prayed. Can you get, get a hold of this? Watch it. She prayed. She's a living testimony in, this, in the earth that if you pray long enough, that God will go get that hard-headed husband and bring him in and save him. Once. See this youngin right here. Let me tell. You, I, let me tell you this right here. I ain't going to embarrass her. She, you just. I'm telling you, she's a living, breathing testimony. No matter how far out there you are, God. People say, "Oh, I don't believe it." Well, don't believe it. But right there, it stands. She's alive. She's serving God. I just baptized her and her baby the other day. I asked her baby the other day. I said, "What you doing in the water, baby?" She said, "Because Jesus is my Lord. Because I'm, I'm a child of God." That's what she said. Can I tell you this right here? There is life past drugs. There is life past alcohol. See this lady? She went through one of the most horrible divorces you ever seen in your life, and she's still here serving God. Watch this right here. This lady and these people, they can tell you today, amen, they can tell you of a surety. Charlene ought to be up here. Get up here, Charlene. Homer, hurry while I'm preaching on you. Listen, they can tell you that there's life after a child goes on. I don't want you to lose your baby, but I want you to know I don't want you to lose hope. If you lost your baby, look here. They survived. She survived. They survived. There's hope in this world. How do you know? There's evidence in the earth that they survived it, and you can survive Amen. This, 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 is my, this is my favorite right, right here. <laughs> Hold my hand. My wife's sitting over. She won't care. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell on her. She can whoop me later. She wants to. I'd take it. But she wants me to pray that she died. She said, I ain't going to make it. I said, you aren't going to make it. Shut up. She said, I, I said, will you stop quitting? I said, you can't. Doctors say, she got cancer and she ain't going to make it. We don't know what it is, but then uh, what was that thing you got uh, down in the hospital? When you was real sick. That's when you was praying to die, remember? I don't know what to call that. <laughs> and she said, I'm just ready to go home. I said, we ain't ready for you to go. I said, we're just going to pray and believe God. Doctor said, well, the cancer she's already got is going to kill her. Then we found a bunch of knots in the back of her neck. Remember that? Remember that? Remember that? And uh, I said, well, I said, I don't care what they found. I said, I'm just going to believe God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God. And we just, we just kept praying. I said, every time the Holy Ghost falls, you come up here. We're going to put our hands on you. We're going to believe that God's going to move in the earth for you and God's going to help you. And, and you know what she did? She just came on up every time. And, then, and she goes back and she keeps going back and she keeps going back to the doctor and keep going back and you keep going back. They'll find something wrong with you. But she went back and they couldn't find that cancer. And they said, we don't know what happened, but it's gone. <laughs> but, but they got a clause in it. You know, they got a clause. They got a clause. The clause is a clause. 
But we know, we know, we know it's our summer. We just can't find it right now. And you still got those knots in the back of your neck. That's, you know. And uh, so we're going to run some tests tomorrow on the knots on the back of your neck because it's probably all just went there and you're going to die anyway. Right? That's what they said, wasn't it? Yeah. You're going to die anyway. And uh, so we just always praying. And you know what? And they went back, done the test, couldn't find no knots, no cancer, no nothing. And that woman's body. Can I, can I say this? Can I say it? 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 Watch this. I don't, I don't care what it is. There's, there's evidence in the earth that God is still a healer. Yeah. There, there's evidence in the earth that God is still a deliverer after children going to be with. There's evidence you can survive. Uh, there's evidence in this earth. There's stones, lively stones. That's evidence you can survive a bad relationship and still have a relationship with God. There's evidence in the earth today that if you keep praying, ladies, if you keep praying, sir, your wife can be saved. Your husband can be saved. Amen. There's evidence to the young people that you can come out from among the world, no matter how deep, now how dark, no matter where you came from, that there's life in Christ and you don't have to live that way. There's hope for them on dope. Standing right up here is a lot this stone that said I'm not living that way anymore right here I'm telling you I love that lady right there and I got respect for her faith amen right through the middle of the worst trial of her life amen right in the middle of it a lot of people have thrown in the towel I've seen people go back to drugs alcohol move prostitutes in the house with them and everything else trying to kill the pain you know what she did a living breathing testimony that God's in the earth that God will sustain you that he'll be a father to you he'll be a brother he'll be a husband Give me what you need today. All these people right here are lively stones. Jesus said, I tell you, if they hush, the evidence that God's been in the earth is going to begin to cry out. Stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. Hallelujah. Saints of God, pray. Prayer walkers, prayer walkers, I got some of you people, but y'all get ready anyway. Now, here's what I want to do. What I want to do is this. If y'all spread out, spread out all the way across right here, would you? Stay with me. Don't run off. Leave me. Now, I don't know today. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what you need. I don't know which one of these categories that you fall under. But I'm asking you, if you need evidence that God wants to move in your life, all right, stand. Right here. Here, just stand. And uh, I, I'm, I'm asking for my friend, would you uh, consider rethinking yourself today? And see, this, I don't know everything you just know about God, but I know this about him. I know this. I know that God is not a respecter of a person. I know that what he did for these people. So I don't, you know what? I, I rarely even talk about my testimony. I've been saved so long, people never, they, they say, I, don't, I can't even see it. <coughs> you know what? These people just recently have walked through these things that we talked about. And God brought them out testimony that he is still moving in the earth. Bow your heads with your hands, bow your hands. They're going to sing something, whatever y'all want to sing, it don't matter. And I want to open the altars today to them who feel like there's no hope for your situation. I want to open the altar. In this one, this, I'd say this today. I would say this today. If you're praying for your husband, I'd get up here I get right in the middle of these women right here and I'd get them to pray for you. I, I would say this today, if you're struggling with drugs, alcohol, I would say I'd get right in here. I, I, would, I would say this today, if you don't understand the untimely death of a loved one and you don't know why and the devil, and the devil bombarding your mind every day and saying God took your baby, you all thank God it was him. And they're forever reserved in heaven for you. But you've got to have some healing in your heart. And as they sing, prayer walkers are coming, and I'm opening the altar. The evidence is in the earth today 
But God is alive and well. And he's still moving in this earth today. Would you come today? Would you step out of your seat and walk this way? And say, I believe that God, what he did for you, he'll do for me. Would you come? 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 Some of you ladies, Taylor, go get her. Go get her. Pray for her. Can't appease her. For a complete healing. Okay, I'll be right with you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You that are in a relationship that's strained, come on. Come on. You that have lost a loved one and you don't understand why look at these good people that survived it look at these good people testimonies that God's moving in the earth if you're sick in your body and you need a healing today if you're sick in your body what are you sitting back there for you better run up here Jesus is alive right there's a living testimony he's still killing cancer he come to bring us life but he come to bring death to cancer and sickness and disease come on would you come would you come would you come hurry Hurry, don't, don't sit back there on God. He's got all the evidence in the world up here on these altars that he's here to take care of you today. You don't have to understand why. All you got to know is that God wants to help you in this situation you're in. God wants to help you today. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Nobody looking around. Saints of God praying. Prayer walkers is walking. Whatever y'all want to sing, whatever you want to sing. Somebody dealing with an untimely death, would you come? Please come. Don't leave out here with that hurt still in your heart. Come let somebody that survived it, that's a living testimony that God can help you in that mess. Would you come? Hurry, don't, don't make me beg you. I beg you to come this morning. I beg and plead with you, just come. Just come and get the help that's in this house today. There's help in here today. There's salvation for the backslider, amen. There's a, there, there's a prodigal son that returned that's up here, amen. He's up here, he's up here, and you can come. You can come today. Today can be the day of salvation for you. Would you come? Please come. God's trying to do something in this house. He's trying to do something in this house. Hey, you go over. Go that one over on her little hands on you. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Come on, come on. What are you waiting on? The Lord's dealing with you. Just come on. Come on.
come today, there's no reason to wait. Oh, Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. And Jesus is calling. spirit there see there's somebody here or somebody here who knows someone who needs to hear this you know pastor said he's not going to tell on me the lord told me get up here and tell on myself you know the devil's tried to take me out with sexual abuse he's tried to take me out with domestic violence he's tried to take me out with iv drug addiction he's tried to take me out with grief and loss and there is nothing that god did not come down and i'm talking y'all y'all know me as a restored redeemed blood bought born again child of the most high king but i wasn't always this i wasn't i was ruthless i was reckless and i was living straight going to hell and god came he grabbed me he yoked me up and he made me who i am today and there is somebody here or somebody who loves someone who's out there in the world that needs to hear it there is no bottom you can go to there is no rock bottom that you can hit that our god can't grab you and bring you up and restore your mind and redeem your soul there's somebody here who needs to hear it hear it now we're all testimonies of what god can do in your lives and every day he amazes me he took me from being an iv drug addict i'm talking i was 115 pounds y'all he took me and he changed me he changed my heart he mended my mind he mended my soul and he may be able to stand here and help the women in sexual abuse to help the women in domestic abuse men as well not only the abuse but the abusers god can come into your heart and he can take that anger from whatever it was that's making you do those things and he can restore you and he can take it all away there's nothing that you can do think of david a murderer adulterer and he was after god's heart somebody needs to hear it go tell it whoever it needs to be told to praise the lord one more call would you come others are still praying if you need help please get help don't leave out here like you came today the lord loves you and the lord has set these people in this church that you might see that what he did for them he'll do for you today 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 is the day of salvation now is the accepted time
Sing one more verse, children. Something to say. Oh, come to the altar. to give the Lord a good praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody else needs prayer before we be dismissed? Amen. Can I say this real quick as they're getting ready to pray for some, for some more folk? These living testimonies let you know that you can overcome. You can be victorious. And you are and can be more than a conqueror. Amen. Through the power of Jesus Christ. A lot of times the devil will beat you up and you'll beat yourself up saying you're never going to make it. But I got news for you. If Jesus is on your side, you are going to make it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Don't quit. Hey, let's do this as they're praying. Stand with me. I do this a lot sometimes and I feel like it becomes redundant. But I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves of who we are in the Lord. Amen. So repeat after me. Say, I am a victor. I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. If you believe that this morning, give him a good praise. Amen. Somebody really ought to praise him. Just take a moment. We got time. We ain't no hurry. Just take a moment.
You've been set. If you really believe that you're a victor and you're an overcomer and you're more than a conqueror through the power of Jesus Christ, give him your best praise you've given him all week long. Let some lively stones begin to shout. Let some lively stones begin a clap offering. My Lord, let some lively stones give a wave offering this morning. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget, tonight, 6 o'clock, be back. Come expecting God to do something. Amen. Let's pray. We'll be dismissed. And uh, Pastor, I lost it. When was the meeting that we were having? Right after church tonight, the leadership, five minutes. You know what five minute means to a preacher? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. So come be ready to stay. No, I'm just kidding. It won't take long. So don't forget, immediately after service tonight, five minutes. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the move of your spirit, God. We thank you for your delivering, saving, healing, sanctifying, Holy Ghost filling power, God, that's in this house, God, and in the in your people today, Father, Lord God. And we ask you, God, to bring us back and forth safe. God, we're coming, God, tonight expecting you to do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this place, Father God. And Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shout, Amen.